Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is a overblown Fitbit hacking story. Early in the week, a researcher named Axela Avril, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, released a teaser of a presentation she planned to give later in the week at a Luxembourg hacking uh, conference. In any case, the research pretty much had to do with hacking a Fitbit. Basically, she figured out how to intercept the Bluetooth uh, signal of a Fitbit device. And not only could she do things like change the steps on your Fitbit, uh, monitor your connection and things like that, but she could also inject a little bit of code on the Fitbit. And the Fitbit would store that code and it would persistently actually broadcast it to any other device that the Fitbit connected to. Now, when the news first got a hint of this story, they quickly talked about how you could use this as a way for the Fitbit to infect a laptop with malware. Now, later in the week, her real presentation came out, and her presentation had some pretty good Fitbit hacking information. She showed how you could actually intercept the signal. She had all kinds of neat uses for a Fitbit, like using it for a random number generator, uh, using this hack to actually make blinky lights show up on your Fitbit, and potentially even using your Fitbit as a way to lock your laptop based on your proximity to your laptop. However, her main hack, the proof of concept video she released, where you actually put a little bit of information on the Fitbit that actually then shared that information with any device it connected to, the whole takeaway that that could infect your laptop or your, your Fitbit device with malware is totally overstated. Really what she could do is inject a 17-byte message that the Fitbit would then rebroadcast in its Bluetooth packets it sent out to other devices. Now this is an interesting interesting vector. That means you could put a little invisible message on a Fitbit. But in order for that little 17 bytes of, of data that the attacker could control to take over your laptop or load malware is a huge step. First of all, that 17 bytes, how does it force your laptop to do anything? One, there would have to be some vulnerability in the actual Fitbit application, or there'd have to be a vulnerability in your Bluetooth stack. And the vulnerability specifically would have to be triggered by parsing this specific 17-byte message. This researcher did not find any such vulnerability. So even though she can put a little bit of data on the Fitbit, she has no way to take advantage of that data. But for the sake of argument, let's say she did discover some vulnerability in the Fitbit app or the Bluetooth stack that could actually uh, be triggered by this little message. 17 bytes of data is not a lot of data to work with. Once you trigger some sort of memory vulnerability, you still need to have code that takes uh, advantage of the pointer and gets it to a certain place so that you have control of what the next code is. That takes a few bytes to do. Then you need to load some sort of payload or shell code. And 17 bytes is not a lot of, of information to do that. Now this particular researcher mentioned an old vulnerability, a crash bug that only took four bytes. But a crash bug is one thing, an actual code execution vulnerability takes much more room. You have to be able to inject shellcode. Long story short, even if you don't understand all this technical stuff I'm talking about, she never did find a vulnerability that would allow this injected code on the Fitbit to do anything to the device it was connecting to. And even if someone did find that vulnerability, there's really not enough room to do anything that bad. So really, all the news out there talking about how a Fitbit can actually push malware to your PC is totally overstated. Now, that said, we do need to consider Internet of Things devices like the Fitbit as a new vector of attack. The fact that she could only control 17 bytes in this case means this is not a real world example of that. But in the future, if someone can find a way to inject a bigger payload and find a way to take advantage of a flaw to use this device to push uh, code to other machines, that could be a threat. That is kind of why people are worried about the Internet of Things. So the whole idea of malware jumping from one type of device to another type of device is plausible. We've actually seen this in the mobile world. There is malware that infects a mobile device, but then tries to move to a traditional laptop when you plug it in. So anyways, this Fitbit research was well done. It is interesting, but any idea that you can actually use this to push malware to a PC or a mobile device from a Fitbit today is totally not true. Don't believe that. That's it for today's story. Thank you for watching.